Right. So Jay said, so the more diverse your genes are, the more able you can have uh, sort of survival of your genes and natural selection by evolution. You have a more diverse uh, genetic repertoire, you have a better chance of surviving different situations, <laughs> right? Passing those on to your offspring. Um, that is it, and that's getting right along exactly where this is important. And even more importantly, it's the diversity of those genes that you pass on to your offspring, if you were to breed with that individual, your offspring would have very diverse, highly um, big repertoire of these MHC genes. That means they would be able to target and defend against a wider array of invading pathogens, right? So if I have MHC1 and my MHC2 are really similar to somebody else's, our offspring are gonna have those same exact, exact complexity of those genes and the same repertoire of antibodies and attack against pathogens. But if I have somebody else that has a very diverse, the blend of those two is gonna create better genetic diversity and a stronger ability to fight against a wider array of pathogens. Basically, offspring will have stronger immune systems and they will survive. So this is sort of at the level of smell, linking to the genes, linking to sort of procreation and increasing the fitness of the offspring or the evolutionary fitness of the genes that are gonna be produced in those offspring, if there are offspring. So interestingly enough, this was really exciting and since then they've created, there's a company called Scientific Match and you can actually do a cheek swab, send it in and they will analyze your MHC genes and stuff and basically filter, you know how the dating apps and you can filter based on location and whatever, height, well, all these different things. They will actually filter the MHC genes that are the most diverse from yours and give you like an individual list of these are your potential prospects, here they are, and then you left or right swipe at your will. But it costs, good luck out, but it costs money, and so it costs to do that. You send in, they basically genotype, and they go, okay, here's the filtered list. Um, so they're making money, they're making money off that. So this really just illustrates smell and your nose actually literally <laughs> kind of sniffing out uh, a mate or a partner or attractiveness to somebody else. So the nose is definitely involved in this process. Believe it or not, in certain places, especially in the East Coast, they have pheromone parties. Sounds weird, right? They even had this on the West Coast. It was mostly East Coast. Pheromone parties were when they show up, they put their shirt or worn garment or t-shirt in a bag, they zip it up and they get a random number and they put it on this pile and everybody smells them. And then you rank them, like your top <coughs> and the one, two, three smells that you like. And then at the end, everybody kind of pairs up. You pair up with your different numbers. And either it works out or it doesn't. I don't know how successful they are, but. It's, it created this whole sort of funny thing that it was on social media. I don't know if you guys ever saw this, but it has, it has come up. So I'm gonna end and start on the love, the biology and evolution of love. But I just wanna end with a couple of these little questions. Come up with ideas or hypotheses. Assuming chemical pheromones are involved in human attraction and selection of mate, would they be more important for one sex over the other or equally important for both? Why? I just want you to sort of think about that. And then what if there's no initial attraction? Okay, so this is kind of a different interpersonal sort of element. What if there's no initial attraction? And you all know what I'm talking about, right? You're like, yeah, they're cool. <laughs> Nothing real exciting, right? And I know I have friends like this. And they're like, oh, I just need to go on another date, just, just to see. Can the pair develop, maintain a strong bond, and eventually love? If there's absolutely no chemical sort of attraction or chemistry right out the gates, okay? Just think about those. I don't know, you wanna think about it now? Take a couple minutes, talk to the partner next to you. See what you think on these two questions, and then I'm going to set up the next part. I think it's easily important. All right. Mm -hmm.